Hi there, this is Miss Niebling, back to teach you the fourth smiley face trick. Now remember that smiley face tricks are the tools that good writers use in their writing to make their readers smile. Now you've already learned three, figurative language, magic three sentences, and specific details for effect. Today is all about repetition for effect. This so happens to be my very favorite of all of the smiley face tricks. I do this all the time, whether I'm teaching, whether I'm talking, or whether I'm writing. So here we go. In your spiral, I want you to write number four, repetition for effect, as the title for this next section. Make sure you write this whole slide down into your notes. Now, repetition for effect is where the writer chooses to repeat words or phrases at least three times in a row. Now, the repetition could take place in just one sentence, or it could take place over multiple sentences. The key thing to remember about repetition for effect is that you choose to repeat words or phrases that are actually worth being repeated. You don't just choose any words or phrases to repeat. You specifically choose words that are going to have an impact on your reader. So you always have to think about what point are you trying to make? What are you trying to stress to your reader? What are you trying to emphasize to them? Once you know that, you'll know how to write repetition for effect. So underneath the definition, I want you to choose one of the following examples of repetition for effect. Choose your favorite. Now as I read these, I want you to think about why the author would choose to repeat the words or phrases that they did. Everything was gray. Gray sky, gray trees, gray hut, gray ground. Gray people in gray clothes moving. This author wanted us to feel a certain way. This author wanted us to feel depressed and kind of like things are dreary. And you know what? That's exactly how I feel. I imagine everything is gray and that's how I imagine this setting. Second example. It was a knocking that would change our lives forever and forever. A knocking at the door that I would hear in a thousand dreams to come. A knocking that would always wake me, no matter how deeply I slept or how comfortable I was. I like this example because a knocking, a knocking, a knocking are two words that are almost poetic. There's a rhythm to it. It's almost like I can hear a knocking, a knocking. And as a result, it's a very powerful effect on the reader. This next example, you can see how they started the phrase the same way, but then they changed the verb at the end. But the moment my friend and I were upside down, all I could think about was what in the world was I doing? All I could hear was my friend's vibrating scream and myself whimpering. All I could feel was the harness around my neck, jerking all different directions. Because of the phrase this author chose to repeat, I'm thinking, hearing, and feeling right along with the person who's either going on a roller coaster or bungee jumping. It's hard to tell. This is an example that I just read this morning. As lightly as I can, I tap the other girl's shoulder with my foot. Here's some water. I keep my eyes closed, but I can hear the water being passed from person to person. There's a hush when the water arrives to Stephanie. I imagine her like a tree, drinking in the water through her roots. I imagine how good it must feel to drink the water after being so thirsty. I imagine the water rising up in her and seeping into her leaves. By choosing to repeat the words, I imagine, that's exactly what I did. I imagined right along with the main character. And that's the effect that the writer wanted us to experience. And so, once again, she chose words that were going to be powerful enough for the reader to notice to kind of slow down and to experience that with the characters. So now it's your turn. Underneath your example that you just wrote down, I want you to give this a try. I want you to try and describe running using repetition for effect. Now running is very broad in general, so have some fun. Be creative with what angle you choose to take this. If you're stuck, try thinking about what runners do when they're running. What are some of their actions? I wrote some examples here on the screen. They breathe, they move their legs, etc. So then you have to ask yourself, what do you want to emphasize? What do you want the reader to focus on? What effect do you want to have on your reader? Do you want them to focus on how hard it is to breathe when they run? 
Well, then choose a phrase that's going to emphasize that hard to breathe feeling. If you want to focus on how fast they're moving, you want to choose a phrase that's going to describe their speed or their stride. If you're going to focus on how much they're sweating, you want to choose a phrase that's going to stand out to them about how hot they are, how, how tired they are, and how much sweat is pouring off of them. So ask yourself, what do you want to focus on? Here's my example. I could see the finish line in the distance, a landmark growing ever closer with every stride. I struggle to catch my breath for the thousandth time. I struggle to ignore the pounding of my heart as it threatened to beat right out of my chest. I struggle to keep my legs in motion long enough to cross that line, that far off line. I chose to emphasize how running is sometimes a struggle, whether it's to catch your breath, ignore your heart pounding, or to keep your legs in motion. So that phrase, I struggled to, helps me to emphasize the struggle of running. So once again, this is your chance to describe running. Choose phrases to repeat and have some fun showing us the experience of repetition for effect and running. Remember, don't tell us, show us. Bring your example and your spiral with you to your next class. We'll be sure to share these and learn from our classmates' examples as well. Thanks for your hard work, guys. We'll talk to you later.